Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. Today's video is going to be about alkenes, particularly their addition reaction. So if you have watched my O-level videos or the video recently posted, addition reaction is the kind where two reactants combine, where two reactants combine to produce a single product, to produce a single product. So mostly it involves breaking a pi bond. Now when we talk about alkene and their pi bonds we know that alkenes have alkenes have carbon-carbon single bond. This is a carbon carbon single bond which is only the sigma bond only the sigma bond is here but when we talk about alkenes there's a carbon carbon double bond so here in alkenes there's a carbon carbon double bond we should remember that here it's a sigma bond and a pi bond when we compare the bond length and the bond energies we are going to compare the bond length and bond energy to see why alkenes are more reactive. So in carbon-carbon single bond, the bond length is 140, 154 picometers, which is almost 1.54 exponent minus 10 meters. Let me write it. 1.54 exponent minus 10 meters. When you compare the carbon-carbon double bond, it is 1.34 exponent minus 10 meters. Carbon-carbon double bond is shorter. You should know that carbon-carbon double bond is shorter. And you would think that it's stronger because shorter bonds are stronger. And then when we talk about the bond energy values, we get to know that carbon-carbon single bond has an energy value of 348 kilojoule per mole, while the carbon-carbon double bond has an energy value of 614 kilojoule per mole. So carbon-carbon double bond is stronger, we know that. But the pi bond is weaker. The pi bond itself is weaker. So when we say alkenes are reactive, we are not saying that we break the sigma and pi bond both. Sigma bond is a strong. Sigma bond is stronger. We are not breaking that. But the pi bond from these two bonds, the sigma and the pi, the pi bond is weaker and we can break that. So alkenes are reactive. Let's write this statement that alkenes are reactive because the pi bond is easily broken. We can break down the pi bond. So alkenes are reactive because the pi bond is, let's, let's make it a little lighter, yeah, because the pi bond is easily broken. Now, how is it broken? Let's compare the structure of ethene. When we focus on ethene, for example, we see there are two carbon atoms. They have a double bond and there are four hydrogens. If we focus on the 3D structure, we get something like this, that there are two carbon atoms. They have sigma bond density between them. So there's sigma bond density between them, which is a sigma bond made by head-on overlap. It looks like the sigma bond here, like this. This is the sigma bond between the carbon atoms. There's another bond made by the carbon atoms with the hydrogen, which is the S-P overlap. So you can see that the hydrogens make bond with our carbon atoms. That would be a, again, sigma bond. So you can see the hydrogen S orbitals will be overlapping 
with the carbon here that is again sigma bond so these are also sigma bonds with the hydrogens you can see there's a total of five sigma bonds here but you should remember there are pi bonds also made if you remember the carbon has their unhybridized p orbital which makes the pi bond so pi bond is made like this pi bond is an electron density above it's like a kidney bean shaped structure above and below the internuclear axis here is the pi bond this is the pi bond you can have the electron density region above or below or simultaneously both ways so this over here is the pi bond it's a electron rich region this is the electron density of the pi bond and it is above and below the internuclear axis so it's really spread it it's not strongly held it's not as strongly held by the nuclei of carbon atoms it's not as strongly held by the nuclei of carbon atoms like the electrons of sigma bond so it's easier to break it and you should know this is a region where electrons are present so this is the region where you will find the electron of the pi bond above and below the internuclear axis and that is why positive charged particles positively charged particles are attracted to it so positively charged particles like electrophiles electrophiles are attracted to it let's recall the definition of electrophile electrophile is an electron deficient chemical species electron deficient chemical species that can accept an electron pair so it is really willing to accept an electron pair because it's electron deficient so it is electron deficient chemical species that can accept electron pair any electrophile will be attracted towards the pi bond and the pi bond will be donated to it so electrons from the pi bond can be donated to it so let's talk about this mechanism now we are going to be talking about the electrophilic addition mechanism let's have a example to begin with imagine you have your ethene molecule which looks like this one of these is the sigma bond the other is the pi bond remember that imagine another molecule that you have in the surrounding is hydrogen bromide now we should know that hydrogen bromide has partial positive and negative charges on it because it is a polar compound it's a polar molecule why is it polar because we know that bromine atoms are more electronegative so bromine atoms are more electronegative that is why hydrogen bromide is a polar compound with partial positive and negative what happens is that bromine tries to break the hydrogen bromide bond in a heterolytic manner remember if you have watched the previous video would know that heterolytic fission where unequal division of electron pair occurs what happens is 
that in a hydrolytic bond fission, the hydrogen bromide bond will break in a way that both electrons will go to the bromine atom. Let's write it somewhere that a hydrolytic bond fission occurs both electrons go to bromine atom the electron pairs were here in the middle now both electron pairs I mean sorry both electrons from the pair are going to the bromine atom so hydrogen has nothing on it and that is why hydrogen becomes electrophile so let's write it also somewhere that hydrogen now becomes electrophile because hydrogen has lost the electron hydrogen has lost the electron which was shared with bromine atoms so hydrogen has nothing exactly at that moment the carbon carbon pi bond hops in and donates the electron pair to electrophile remember we talked about the fact electrophile wants to accept electron pair so carbon carbon pi bond will be donated to the hydrogen the pi bond here the pi bond was shared between these two carbons let's highlight them with a yellow pen and let's highlight the other one with a red pen the carbon carbon pi bond was to, like was shared between these two carbon atoms and the pi bond is now donated to the hydrogen atom so let's write the steps step one heterolytic bond fission heterolytic bond fission between hydrogen and bromine atoms then what happened hydrogen atom loses electron and becomes and becomes H plus electrophile what's the next step the carbon carbon pi bond the carbon carbon pi bond is donated to the H plus electro file the carbon carbon pi bond is donated to the electrophile okay now remember one thing that the pi bond was an electron pair and when the hydrogen goes to these carbons it makes a bond it's very interesting to note on a dot and cross level for example this is carbon number one this is carbon number two let's make it in a better way yeah carbon carbon and these are the hydrogens because we are not concerned with them right now so I'm just drawing line structures there were electron pairs like these which is the dot and cross here and the dot and cross here the black electron pair is the Sigma bond and let's say the blue electron pair in the dot and cross diagram is the pi bond okay the Sigma bond is strong enough so the Sigma bond remains but the blue bond is the pi bond so it will be broken down and what happens is that it's donated to the hydrogen the hydrogen is nearby if it is donated in a way that the yellow carbon makes a bond with the hydrogen it means the red carbon is losing its electron if the yellow carbon makes a bond with the hydrogen using this blue electron pair that means the red carbon is losing its electron from the pair and because now it's donated to the hydrogen or another possibility is that when these two carbon atoms were here and they had their sigma and the pi bond 
the hydrogens were here another possibility I'm drawing now when the hydrogen comes if the red carbon makes a bond if the red carbon makes a bond with the hydrogen then it's injustice with the yellow carbon so there are literally two possibilities possibility possibility number one or possibility number two in our case this structure is symmetrical so it's it's it doesn't really matter but we will talk about examples where it will become really vital for us going back to the mechanism we started with the effect that the carbon carbon double bond was there both hydrogen uh, on both sides were there the HBr molecule had its partial positive and partial negative heterolytic bond fission between HBr and then the carbon carbon pi bond is donated to the H now th there are two possibilities highlighting them with yellow and with a red pen the hydrogens are still here the bromide is now a negative ion the yellow carbon on the left the red carbon on the right the first possibility is that the yellow carbon makes a bond with the hydrogen and red carbon becomes positive in nature or another possibility would be that the red carbon makes a bond yellow becomes positive again that would be exactly the same possibility so there's no point in drawing it because it's a symmetrical structure we call such a scenario as a carbocation a carbon with positive is called carbocation carbocation or carbonium ion in a level we normally call it carbocation now what happens is that the bromide will donate its lone pair to the carbon so bromide donates the lone pair lone pair to the carbon and make a bond so the carbons are still here the previous hydrogens are still here the yellow carbon towards the left the red carbon towards the right the hydrogen from the HBr had made a bond here and now you can see there is a bond made with the Br so now this is the way we add HBr remember bromide is a nucleophile remember what's a nucleophile a nucleophile is electron rich species electron rich species that donates lone pair that donates lone pair of electron so in today's video we started our concept with the idea of alkenes we said that alkenes have a carbon carbon pi bond with the sigma bond even though the two bonds the sigma and pi the double bond is stronger as a whole but pi bond can be broken down really quickly why can it be broken down why can it be like broken down really quickly because a pi bond has electron density spreaded above and below above and below the internuclear axis so electrophiles can be attracted towards the pi bond and pi bond can be donated to electrophiles electrophiles can accept electron pair this mechanism is known as electrophilic addition where a heterolytic bond fission occurs a electrophile is formed carbon carbon pi bond is donated to the electrophile then we talked about two possibilities based on which carbon makes the bond and which carbon becomes the carbocation and then we talked about a nucleophile making a bond a nucleophile which donates the lone pair in the next video we'll talk about more complicated examples Stay tuned guys. Thanks.